Hey everybody, let's uh, start making a background for our GB Studio game. So we're going to do something a little different than what you might think when we get ready to make this background. So let's look at the docs for GB Studio for a second and see what we have to do for backgrounds. Um, they can contain four colors, and we'll talk about those colors um, maybe in the next video. But what we need to figure out now is that backgrounds are divided into 8 by 8 pixels and the tile sets must be um, so it must be a multiple of eight in both width and height so the minimum size is 160 pixels by 144 pixels and the largest size it can be is 256 by 256 the other thing here that's tricky is an image can contain more no more than 192 unique 8 by 8 tiles at once due to the memory limits so you have to repeat about half your tiles. Now, when they're talking about tiles, they're using a tile editor um, to build these things, but we're going to do something a little bit different. But in order for this to work, we're going to have to figure out um, how to stay within this unique tile limit. And so we're going to do a little bit of math and figure that out here for just a moment. So what we have figured out is that 8 times 8, that 8 by 8 pixels, is 64 pixels, okay? So every tile is 64 pixels. And then 160 by 144, that's the size of the screen, the minimum size. So if you do that math, then you've got 23,040 pixels that is the minimum size of the screen. So you have to repeat about half of those. Okay, how do we know what that is? Well, we're going to say that 192 of the tiles, like they said, 8 by 8 tiles, so times 64 gives us another number. Okay, it gives us 12,288. Okay, so if we subtract that amount and we figure out what we have left to work with, we get 10,752 free pixels, okay? So these are the free pixels. So it's about 100 by 100, right? And that doesn't quite divide into 8 by 8 pixels evenly. So what we have to figure out is how we're going to get that divided evenly to make something that works with the 8 by 8 tile. So we don't want to go over this 10,752 pixels with the total pixels in our background picture. If we fill in everything else with just black, then we're repeating enough of our tiles, it's just the black tile, that it doesn't bother the engine and things don't glitch out, okay? So I played with this a little bit and I figured out that 96 by 96 is really one of the best ways to work because it's a square and it also divides evenly by 8. It also divides evenly by 16 and your characters, okay, your sprites are 16 by 16 picks. So if we divide that 96 by 16, it divides in there evenly, and that means you get a 6 by 6 square, okay? So you get this 6 by 6 image. And if you have your 6 by 6 tile image, then the engine doesn't, it doesn't bother the engine and you can do basically whatever you want with these tiles right here and then it'll still keep the engine from glitching out. If you go over this, okay, and all of these are unique tiles, then the engine will start to glitch out a little bit and it won't work. So um, I'll show you how to do this because it gives us a way to make backgrounds quickly and easily. Um, 
there's probably a little bit of wiggle room here where you could do something different, but I've worked with 96 by 96 for a little while and we'll go with that and see what's gonna happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw some scenes using this idea of the square grid. Okay, so here's what we're gonna try out. So I just drew this grid onto this piece of paper. This is three inches by three inches with a half inch grid. That way I have a six by six um, grid to work with and to kind of think about. And this little square is a half inch, so this represents about the size of a sprite in the game. So just to help you draw your scale, this is about the size that your character will take up in the game. And so you want to keep that in mind as you draw your background. Okay? This paper is 3 inches by 12 inches. If you don't have 12 inch paper, you could make it 3 inches by 9 inches with a piece of computer paper but you'll have to be a little careful with your folding, okay, so that you end up mostly with squares. It's not super important because you can resize them in paint.net when we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about keeping the bottom third as my path, okay? So we're going to draw this more or less like a 2D drawing, and we're going to make a little forest path or something, for our character to walk along, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a house, okay? So if I know the character is about that size, then I'm gonna draw a door around the size of that square. And I can use this to kind of place the house into the pixel grid a little bit. So if I kind of think about the house being about that size and the door being about the size of the character, okay, then that's a good place to start. So maybe I'll put a couple of windows here and I'll put a roof on the house and a little chimney sticking out here. So I wouldn't get too concerned about making your very first one really detailed or perfect. Just do something as basic as you can think about and then we'll do some more complicated stuff later. So I've got the house here with the windows. I'm going to draw some bushes going across here. And I'll leave a little space right there in between. Uh, maybe I'll put a tree in here. I'll leave this open and we'll put a few more trees. Okay. So when you first start out, okay, don't spend a whole lot of time making some really great, beautiful drawing. Just test this out and see how this works for you. If you can get through this part of it, then we'll go from there. And we'll put a little manicured tree here in the yard for our friend. Maybe some mountains in the background and a nice tall mountain here that the person can visit. So we're just gonna make our game about taking a walk in the forest right now. Okay, so we've got that general path going on there. We can kind of suggest that the character follow that path by sketching that in really lightly if we want to, uh, but this can get us a good start. Now, what we want to do is, in order to pick this up easily in paint.net, we probably just want to outline it with a black marker. If you don't want to draw on top of your sketch, you can use a light box or a window and lay another piece of paper over it and trace it. There's actually some apps, some light box apps for your iPad that will just put on a white screen on the iPad and use the backlight for the screen to show through and you can trace over the design with the black marker and then save your sketch for later and trace it multiple times. If you trace it, you can get rid of any of the extra pencil lines that are still there. So we'll get, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna grab my black marker and trace over everything and then 
I'll show you what we're going to do to get it to the computer, at least for this video. Okay, so I grabbed my little light box panel here. This is a cool LED one that I got, um, and it's just a little LED light box that lights up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace the design that I made with a Sharpie and make sure that I've transferred most of that information from the pencil sketch into just black and white. That'll make it a little easier. It'll save us some cleaning up time in the computer, okay? That's what slows people down the most is learning to do the cleaning up in the computer. Um, and so this will give us a chance to do this part just by hand because most of us have probably done some drawing with a pencil and a marker more so than we have using Photoshop or Paint.net or one of these graphics editing programs. So I'm going to finish up tracing this and then we'll show you how to get it into the computer. Okay, so now I've got everything traced with the black marker, so now I don't have to worry about the pencil lines or smudges or anything like that. It's mostly just a black and white drawing. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to just use my phone to take a picture of this and I'm going to email it to myself. That's probably the quickest way to get the picture to yourself and onto your computer with the stuff that you have. If your computer has a, if you have a scanner or you have a camera hooked up to the computer or something, you can do something different. But the simplest and fastest way is just to take a picture of it with a phone and email it to yourself or have your parents do that. And then we will get this into the computer and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got my photo taken with my phone and I emailed it to myself. So now I'm going to download the file. So here's my picture. I'll download it. It's going to end up in your downloads folder usually. So if you sort things by type and make the icons there, you can find it. So here's my JPEG file. I'm going to open with paint.net. So I right clicked to open with and get it into paint.net. And so then what we want to do is we want to rotate the image. So we're going to rotate the image counterclockwise so it's 90 degrees. Now we're going to cut it into parts so that we can add it to our picture. All right, so let's chop this into a few different parts. So if you can see me right now, let's make sure we've got that going. Yep, all right, cool. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take and cut it into squares. So I'm going to select a portion, okay, pretty close to what I think is a square. If you want to make sure it's perfectly square, you can hold shift and it will constrain this to a square. And it'll be pretty close, but you don't need to worry about it too much. You just need to get it close to a square. And then I'm going to go Control X to cut it. And then up here, File, New. And it'll automatically be the size that you created. Okay. If you want to set your resolution to 96 pixels per inch, that's fine. And then Control V to paste it into that picture. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the image from 887 pixels to 96 by 96 pixels. So it'll fit the 96 by 96 pixels that the GB Studio program wants us to have it in, at least for this type of background making. Make sure you click by absolute size and don't maintain aspect ratio. That means it'll turn it into 96 by 96. Okay? And so now it's made it a lot smaller. Okay? 
and it's very pixelated, okay? But that's what we want it to be, okay? And so then we're gonna do the same thing with these other pieces. So we're gonna cut this into four sections, okay? About four square sections. So control X, control new, it'll open up this, control V, image, resize, 96 by 96 okay and then we'll blow it up a little bit so we can see it okay so then we're going to do the same thing here cut this into another section doesn't have to be perfectly square the computer can do that for you then file new 96 by 96 whoops we don't want to do that file new we'll open that then we'll paste it in there then we'll change it image resize 96 by 96 okay so we don't want this one anymore. And one more, okay? So we have all four sections. And control X, new file, control V to paste it, image resize 96 by 96. And we'll make that just a little bit bigger. All right, cool. So we've got that all ready to go. And we haven't saved any of these yet, okay? But we're gonna add them into a background and we'll do a little coloring in here in just a bit. So that's the first part of this video. And we'll take a break here because we're getting close to 20 minutes. And then we'll come back in the next part and show you how to color everything in.